I never really knew my mom. She passed away when I was just three, leaving behind only a collection of photographs and the faintest memories that sometimes feel more like dreams. My dad, James Parker, owned a small but successful business that often took him away on trips. He was a good man, just, sometimes too trusting, I guess. I remember the day dad introduced me to Sarah. I was four, and he told me she was going to be my new mom. She had long blonde hair and smiled a lot, at least when dad was around. They got married pretty quickly, and within a year, I had a baby sister named Emma. Rose, come meet your little sister, dad had said, beaming with pride. I remember touching Emma's tiny fingers and thinking how cool it would be to have a sister to play with. If only I'd known then how things would turn out. My grandmother, dad's mom, visited us often in those early days. She was this warm, energetic woman who always brought me cookies and told the best stories. But I started noticing the tension between her and Sarah pretty early on. James, dear, grandma would say, looking around our increasingly messy house, perhaps Sarah could use some help with the housework? The dishes have been piling up. Sarah would grip her coffee mug tighter, that fake smile plastered on her face. Oh, mother, you know how busy I am with the baby. These things take time. Later, I'd overhear Sarah on the phone with her friends, that old witch. Can you believe her? Coming into my house and criticizing my housekeeping? She's absolutely crazy. The tension kept building until one day, when I was about six, it all exploded. Grandma had come over unexpectedly and found Sarah lounging on the couch while I was trying to reach the sink to wash dishes. This is unacceptable, Grandma had shouted. She's just a child, Sarah. You can't make her do everything while you sit around all day. Sarah burst into tears, fake ones, I now know, and ran to Dad's office. I can't take it anymore, James. Your mother, she's trying to destroy our family. She's always criticizing me, always making me feel worthless. You have to choose, James, your mother, or your family. That was the last time I saw my grandmother for many years. Dad chose Sarah, just like she knew he would. He called Grandma and told her not to come around anymore. I remember seeing her walk down our driveway for the last time, her shoulders slumped in defeat. Good riddance to that crazy old woman, Sarah had muttered under her breath, but loud enough for me to hear. Then she turned to me with those cold eyes I'd come to know so well. From now on, Rose, my mother is your only grandmother. Understand? I nodded, fighting back tears. That was the day I learned an important lesson, in our house, Sarah's word was law, and anyone who challenged her would disappear from our lives. I was seven years old, and my real nightmare was just beginning. Everything changed right after my eighth birthday. Sarah called me into the living room one morning, while Dad was away on another business trip. Emma was playing with her toys, scattering them everywhere as usual. Rose, you're a big girl now, Sarah said, her voice sickly sweet. It's time you started helping around the house. You'll be responsible for keeping things tidy and clean. I didn't think much of it at first. I'd always been neat with my own things anyway, and I thought helping meant normal kid stuff, like making my bed or putting away my toys. But Sarah had other plans. Start with picking up Emma's mess, she ordered, pointing at the chaos of toys, crayons, and crushed crackers covering the floor and make sure you vacuum after. That became my new normal. Every day, I'd clean up after Emma, who seemed to take special delight in making messes. She'd dump out entire boxes of cereal, just to find the toy at the bottom, spill juice on purpose, and leave sticky handprints on every surface she could reach. Can my friend Katie come over to play? I asked one day, hopeful for some normal kid time. Sarah's face hardened. Absolutely not. Your little friends will just make more mess for you to clean up. Besides, you have chores to do. I watched through the window as Emma's friends came over regularly, turning the house upside down while I trailed behind them with a trash bag and cleaning supplies. One day, when I was cleaning up another of Emma's disasters, I tried to reason with her. She was three by then, old enough to understand basic things, I thought. Emma, 
Please try to pick up your toys when you're done playing, I said gently. It would really help. Rose, Sarah's sharp voice, cut through the air. She stormed into the room, face red with anger. How dare you tell your sister what to do? She's growing up to be smart and successful, she doesn't need to waste her time cleaning. That's your job. By the time I turned nine, I was basically running the household whenever dad was away. Sarah would leave me alone for hours while she took Emma to play centers, parks, or her friends' houses. I was terrified of using the stove, I could barely reach the controls, but I was more scared of Sarah's anger if dinner wasn't ready. I'd drag a chair to the counter, trying to figure out how to make simple things like pasta or heat up soup, constantly afraid I'd burn myself or start a fire. Dad's homecomings were like watching a magic show. Sarah would transform into a completely different person the moment his key turned in the lock. The house would already be spotless, she'd spend the morning cleaning it herself for once, and she'd be in the kitchen cooking his favorite meals. Oh James, I'm just exhausted, she'd sigh, playing the role of the overwhelmed housewife perfectly. Taking care of two growing girls is such hard work. The house is so big, and there's so much to do. Maybe a part-time nanny for the girls? And perhaps a housekeeper to help with the cleaning? But it's so expensive. Of course, Dad would immediately agree. Anything to make things easier for you, dear. Just tell me how much you need. I'd watch from the stairs as Sarah collected the checks or cash, knowing that money would never go to any nanny or housekeeper. I was doing all that work for free, after all. But I couldn't say anything. Sarah had made sure of that. You see how easily your father cut off contact with his own mother, she'd whispered to me one day when dad was in the shower. I convinced him to do that. Just imagine what I could make him believe about you if you don't behave. That threat hung over me constantly. I'd seen how quickly dad had turned against grandma, would he do the same to me? I couldn't risk it. So I stayed quiet and did whatever Sarah demanded. While I scrubbed floors and did laundry, Sarah spent dad's household help money on herself and Emma. She'd come home from the beauty salon with fresh highlights and manicured nails, shopping bags full of designer clothes for Emma dangling from her arms. Here, Rose, she'd toss me a bag from the clearance rack at the discount store. I got you some things too. They're not quite as nice as Emma's, but beggars can't be choosers, right? The worst was when she'd look at me with that curl of disgust in her lip, usually when I was doing something she considered beneath her, like scrubbing the toilets or mopping the kitchen floor. God, you look just like your grandmother right now, she'd sneer. That same stubborn, judgmental expression. No wonder she ended up alone, and no wonder you will too if you don't learn your place. Those words would echo in my head at night as I lay in bed, exhausted from another day of being Sarah's secret servant. I'd think about grandma, wondering if she ever thought about me, wondering if she knew what was happening in our house. Sarah's mother, who insisted I call her Grandma Linda, lived just a few blocks away from us. But unlike my real grandmother who'd been forced out of my life, Linda made it clear from the start that she didn't consider me family. Oh, Sarah, darling, she'd coo when we visited, pulling Emma into her lap while completely ignoring my presence. It must be so difficult for you having to raise someone else's child. And spending all that money on her too. Sarah would put on her victim face, the same one she'd perfected for dad. It is hard, mom. Rose is becoming so difficult lately. So angry and disobedient. Sometimes I wonder if I'm doing the right thing, trying to raise her as my own. I'd sit quietly in the corner of Linda's living room, pretending to read a book while they talked about me as if I wasn't even there. Linda would shower Emma with gifts, new toys, pretty dresses, expensive dolls, while giving me disapproving glances. Linda would take Emma for special grandmother-granddaughter outings, to the zoo, to the movies, to the park, while I was left behind. Sarah would remind me to be grateful that Linda tolerated me at all. After all, she'd say with that cruel smile, you're not really her granddaughter, are you? Just like I'm not really your mother. We're stuck with each other, unfortunately. As I approached my 12th birthday, Sarah's demands increased exponentially. 
the cleaning schedule became more rigorous, the standards impossibly high. Every surface had to sparkle, every floor had to shine, every piece of laundry had to be perfectly folded, and heaven help me if I fell behind. Look at these windows, she'd shriek, running her finger along the glass. I can see streaks. Do it again. And don't forget to dust the blinds this time. Or, these bathroom tiles are still dirty. Get down on your hands and knees, and scrub them properly. I want to see my reflection in them. The punishments for not meeting her standards were creative and cruel. She'd make me stay up late redoing tasks, knowing I had school the next day. She'd accidentally spill things right after I'd finished cleaning, forcing me to start over. She'd hide my phone or computer until the house met her impossible standards. But I never breathed a word of this to Dad. The threat of losing my chance at college loomed over everything. College represented freedom to me, a escape from this house, from Sarah's control, from the endless cleaning and cooking and serving. I dreamed about living in a dorm, having real friends, being normal. One word to your father about our little arrangement, Sarah would threaten, and you can kiss those college dreams goodbye. I'll make sure he knows what an ungrateful, lazy burden you've been. Who do you think he'll believe, his loving wife or his difficult teenage daughter? So I kept quiet, did my chores, and focused on my studies whenever I could find the time. I counted down the days until I could leave for college, telling myself that if I could just hold on long enough, I'd finally be free. But freedom seemed so far away, and Sarah's control only grew stronger with each passing day. Late at night, when the house was finally quiet and my hands were raw from cleaning, I'd lie in bed and imagine what my life could have been like if my mom hadn't died, or if dad hadn't married Sarah, or if grandma was still around. Several years have passed, and my grades had been slipping for months. Between the constant cleaning, cooking, and trying to keep up with Sarah's endless demands, I barely had time to study. Most nights, I'd fall asleep over my textbooks, exhausted from another day of being the family's secret servant. When Dad came home from his latest business trip, Sarah was ready with her newest performance. James, we need to talk about Rose, she said during dinner, her voice dripping with fake concern. Her teachers called today. She's falling behind in almost every subject. I try to help her with homework, but she'd rather spend time on her phone than study. I think she needs consequences. I'm not lazy, I finally burst out. I'm trying my best. Rose, Dad cut me off sternly. Your grades are important. I work hard to provide for this family, and I expect you to take your education seriously. No phone for a month. I felt something snap inside me. Years of pent-up frustration and anger bubbled to the surface. I opened my mouth to tell him everything, about the cleaning, the cooking, how Sarah treated me when he was away. But Sarah must have seen the rebellion in my eyes. She pulled me aside after dinner, her nails digging into my arm. Remember your grandmother, she hissed. Remember how easily your father chose me over her? One word from me, and you'll never see him again. Is that what you want? The fight drained out of me. I knew she was right, she had dad wrapped around her finger. I couldn't risk losing him too. A few weeks later, Sarah threw Emma a massive 10th birthday party. I watched from the kitchen as a dozen of Emma's friends invaded our house, carrying presents and squealing with excitement. Sarah had ordered mountains of food, pizzas, burgers, sodas, and a huge cake. Rose, Sarah called out. Bring more napkins. And make sure everyone has drinks. I became their reluctant server, bringing food and cleaning up spills while Emma and her friends treated me like their personal maid. They deliberately knocked things over, laughing as I scrambled to clean up. Hey, servant girl, one of Emma's friends called out. We need more pizza over here. They all burst into giggles as I silently brought them another plate. By the time the party ended, the house looked like a disaster zone. Soda stains covered the carpet, pizza crusts were ground into the couch, and sticky candy wrappers were everywhere. This place is disgusting, Sarah sneered after the last guest left. Clean it up. All of it. And do a proper job this time. 
I was on my hands and knees scrubbing the floor when Dad's Skype call came through. Sarah yanked me up by my arm. James, she answered sweetly. You'll never believe what happened today. Rose had some friends over, and they completely trashed the living room. I've been cleaning for hours. I stood there, stunned by her blatant lie, as Dad's face darkened on the screen. Rose, he said severely, you need to help Sarah more and start behaving better. She's been telling me about your attitude lately, and I'm very disappointed. That night, after finishing the cleaning and listening to another lecture from Sarah about my poor work, I cried myself to sleep. I was 15 years old, but I felt ancient, worn down by years of Sarah's psychological warfare and Dad's blind trust in her lies. The next day at school, I couldn't focus on anything. My friend Jessica noticed something was wrong during lunch break. Rose, you look terrible. What happened? I told her everything about Emma's party, the lies, the endless cleaning, and how Sarah had manipulated my father once again. To my surprise, Jessica didn't just offer sympathy, she had an idea. Your phone, she said, her eyes lighting up. It has a voice recorder, right? Record her. Record everything she says to you when your dad's not around. Your dad needs to hear the truth, Rose. The real Sarah, not the perfect stepmother act she puts on for him. That afternoon, I started recording. As soon as dad's car left for his latest business trip, Sarah's mask came off. This floor is filthy, she screamed while I was mopping. Are you stupid or just lazy? Do it again. The phone in my pocket captured every word. Later, while I was dusting the living room, you're just like your grandmother, useless and ungrateful. This house needs to be spotless, do you understand me? The recordings kept piling up. Sarah ordering me around, calling me names, threatening me. But the biggest revelation came that evening. Listen here, she cornered me in the kitchen. If you don't shape up, I'll tell your father you've been stealing money from my purse. I'll say I caught you drinking alcohol in your room. Who do you think he'll believe? I felt my phone recording in my pocket and managed to keep my face neutral, though my heart was racing. Later that night, Sarah's friend Diane came over. They opened a bottle of wine in the kitchen, not realizing I was still awake, my phone recording through the crack in my bedroom door. Remember when I got rid of his mother? Sarah laughed, the wine loosening her tongue. That old bat was getting too nosy, asking too many questions about how I spent James's money. So I told him she threatened me, said she was trying to destroy our marriage. He bought it completely. Cut her off just like that. You're brilliant, Diane giggled. And he never suspected? Please, James believes anything I tell him. He's such a sucker for the helpless wife act. Meanwhile, I get his money, and his precious daughter does all my housework. It's perfect. They kept talking, revealing more and more of Sarah's manipulations and lies. My phone recorded it all. That night, after making sure Sarah was asleep, I sat at my computer, hands shaking. I created a new email to Dad and attached all the recordings. In the subject line, I wrote, The Truth About Sarah. The message was simple, Dad, it's time you knew what your wife is really like when you're not around. Please listen to these recordings. All of them, Rose. Two days after I sent the email, I was in the kitchen making dinner when I heard a car door slam. Looking through the window, I saw Dad's car in the driveway, he wasn't supposed to be home for another week. My heart started racing. The front door burst open with such force that the walls shook. Dad stormed in, his face a thundercloud of anger I'd never seen before. Sarah jumped up from the couch, dropping her magazine. James, she stuttered, her face going pale. What are you doing home? I know everything, Sarah. Dad's voice was deadly quiet. Everything about how you've been treating my daughter. Sarah's eyes darted to me for a split second before she launched into her usual act. Oh, James, has Rose been telling you lies again? You know how difficult she can be. Dad pulled out his phone. Difficult? Let's talk about difficult, Sarah. He pressed play, 
and Sarah's own voice filled the room, Listen here, if you don't shape up, I'll tell your father you've been stealing money. Sarah's face drained of all color. Dad played more recordings, her screaming at me to clean, calling me names, and finally, the conversation with Diane about manipulating Dad to cut off contact with Grandma. You monster, Dad whispered when the recordings finished. You absolute monster. Making my daughter into your personal servant? Lying about my mother? Using me for my money? James, I can explain, Sarah started, but Dad cut her off. We're done. I'm divorcing you. I won't spend another minute married to someone who could abuse a child like this. He turned to me. Rose, go pack your things. Only what you need right now, we'll get the rest later. Twenty minutes later, we were in Dad's car, driving away from the only home I'd known for the past eight years. Dad had made a few quick calls and arranged a furnished apartment for us. Once we were inside the apartment, Dad pulled me into a tight hug. I couldn't remember the last time he'd hugged me like this. I'm so sorry, Rose, he whispered, his voice breaking. I'm so sorry I didn't see what was happening. I promise you, no one will ever hurt you like that again. The next morning, we drove to a small house on the other side of town. My heart skipped a beat when I realized where we were, Grandma's house. She opened the door before we could even knock. Despite not seeing her for years, I recognized her immediately, the same kind eyes, the same warm smile. Without a word, she pulled me into her arms. Dad broke down then, telling Grandma everything, the recordings, Sarah's abuse, the lies that had torn our family apart. Grandma listened, nodding sadly. I knew something was wrong, she said. Sarah never worked, just spent your money like water. When I tried to talk to her about it, she told me you were her money bag and she'd spend whatever she wanted. Then she threatened to turn you against me and keep you from seeing your grandchildren. And she did exactly that. I watched Dad's face crumple with shame as he realized how completely Sarah had manipulated him. But Grandma just took his hand and squeezed it, showing that same forgiveness and love I remembered from my childhood. The divorce proceedings stretched on for several months. Sarah fought tooth and nail for everything she could get, but in the end, the judge ordered an even split of all assets. Dad let her keep the old house, neither of us wanted to live there anymore, too many bad memories, and he used his half to buy us a beautiful new home closer to Grandma. Emma chose to stay with Sarah, which hurt Dad deeply, but didn't surprise me. Sarah had spent years molding Emma into her mini-me, poisoning her against Dad, just as she'd tried to do with me. When Dad attempted to maintain a relationship with Emma, she blocked his number. She's just like her mother now, I overheard him telling Grandma one day, his voice heavy with regret. But while we lost Emma, our own little family grew stronger. Dad started working mostly from home, cutting back on business trips. He hired a real housekeeper this time, a kind woman named Maria who taught me that cleaning could actually be peaceful when it wasn't forced on you. The therapy sessions were Dad's idea. You've been through trauma, Rose, he said one morning over breakfast. We both have. And we need help processing it. Dr. Anderson, my therapist, helped me understand that none of what happened was my fault. In our joint sessions, Dad would often break down crying. I should have protected you, he'd say. I should have seen what was happening. But I didn't blame him anymore. Sarah had been manipulating him just as much as she'd been abusing me. She was an expert at playing the victim while making others suffer. Grandma became a regular part of our lives again, coming over for Sunday dinners and helping me with college applications. My grades improved dramatically now that I actually had time to study. The dark circles under my eyes faded, and I started sleeping through the night without anxiety attacks. Sometimes I'd catch glimpses of Sarah and Emma around town. They'd turn away quickly, Sarah pulling Emma close as if to protect her from me. It was ironic, really, Sarah had spent years painting me as the villain in Emma's eyes, when she was the monster all along. But I didn't waste energy being angry anymore. Instead, I focused on my future. I'd been accepted to several colleges, including my dream school with a partial scholarship. 
Dad insisted on paying the rest, saying it was the least he could do. You deserve every opportunity, he told me. And I'm so proud of how strong you've been. Sitting here now in my bedroom, surrounded by college brochures and acceptance letters, I can hardly believe how much my life has changed in the past year. The scared, servile girl I used to be feels like a stranger. Now I know what real family love feels like, not the conditional, manipulative kind Sarah offered, but the genuine support and care I get from dad and grandma. Tomorrow we have another therapy session, and next week I need to make my final college decision. But for the first time in years, I'm not afraid of the future. I'm excited about it. The nightmare is over, and I'm finally free to be myself. Sarah tried to break me, but instead, she made me stronger. And while I'll never forget what happened in that house, I won't let it define me either.